everybody. Welcome to the Nerd Republic. Um, real quick before we get into things, I just want to let everybody know we have changed the name of the channel. Um, those who've been watching us for a while, watching our Bad Batch discussions, um, you may notice that we've changed the name. Um, if you're new here, cool. Um, so from now on, we are the Nerd Republic. Um, so nothing's changed. It's the name on the name on the tin. So with that, we're going to go ahead and get into it. Today, I am joined by a couple of fellow nerds. I've got the Trios and the Fire Greska, and we're going to be discussing and going over Mandalorian Season 3. It's Episode 1 for Season 3. They titled it Episode 17 on Disney+. Plus, um, And the title of the episode is The Apostate. Uh, Greska, Fire Greska, how are you doing today? I am doing great. I am ready to talk about Grogu. I know you are. Uh, Trios, how you doing, sir? I am doing fantastic. I mean, Mando just came out. Bad Batch is still running well. Like, it's it's good. We've got two good Star Wars shows going right now, at least. So, I'm, I'm doing good. Yeah, I, I would say that, yes, we have two good Star Wars shows. Um, which is always a joy. Uh, so this week's episode of uh, Mandalorian, um, we've got our director is, and I'm probably going to butcher the name, and I apologize. Uh, it's Rick Fami, Famu Yiwa. Um, and then the writer, of course, is John Favreau. Um, we've got Pedro Pascal returning as our wonderful Din Djarin. Um, we've got Katie Sackoff as Bo-Katan, uh, Carl Weathers as Grief Karga, and Emily, Emily Swallow as the Armor. Um, so we're going to start off with some uh, spoiler-free thoughts. Um, so, Trios, we're going to start with you on spoiler-free things. Um, well, I mean, you're you're starting to get into the area where sometimes since they've developed a following and all that stuff, they'll start slacking on production quality and stuff. Usually you see that between seasons three and five of a show. They haven't done that at all. Um, this season's quality looks to be the same as the first two seasons. The writing's been excellent. Um, set, costumes, everything looks fantastic. Um, still love the music. Like, Mandalorian music is on point. Um... Yeah, it, um, I really enjoyed this episode. They did a lot of fun things. Uh, I can't wait to really get into it. I agree. Um, yeah, there, there's there's some stuff in here where um, I couldn't... It was really hard to tell if it was actually like CG or puppetry. Um, and we'll touch on that a little bit when we get into the spoiler section. Um, but yeah, the production value is really good. Um, Fire Greska, your spoiler-free thoughts. I really enjoyed this episode. Um, I agree with you. There are things that I couldn't really tell if it was a puppet or if it was CG. Um, however, Baby Yoda or Grogu, um, yeah, you know, you got lots of screen screen time, so I'm happy about that. I mean, at this point, he is a main character. Um, yes. You know, after after his decisions in season two, you know, he is just as much of a main character as as Din is. Um, so, well, cool. Um, you guys got any other spoiler-free things before we move into spoiler territory? Uh, mentioning his decisions from season two, I think it's going to be very interesting. Even just looking past the mandalorian um you know it, it internet forgive me for saying it but if grogu survives the entire mandalorian series seeing where they put him and what other main canon he comes into down the line because a, a another you know yoda species that can use the force with mandalorian training like boba fett uses the force i i that's mildly terrifying to me. So it'll be cool to see if they start incorporating him into 
further down lore. I agree. Um, but I think I think he'll be okay. So, <laughs> all right. Uh, Fire Greska, any other final spoiler-free thoughts? Are you ready to get just into to, it? Just a quick comment on what uh, on what Tr Trios just said. They're not going to kill their biggest moneymaker they've had since they introduced it. I don't know, man. It worked for Game of Thrones. Uh, a lot. Grogu's too much of a merch <laughs> spot. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, all right, cool. Well, we are going to move into our spoiler section here. Um, so if you have not seen uh, the first episode of season three here, um, please go, you know, just put a pause on this video. You don't have to close it down. Just pause it. Open up a new tab in your browser. Go over to Disney Plus. Uh, watch the episode and then come on back. You can join us in discussion down in the comments and you know listen to our thoughts and uh you know realize that we're a bunch of nerds so uh, this is your spoiler warning hey i'm the jig the nerd the general director here at the nerd network and i would like to invite you to take a look in the description of this video at our link tree page it has our patreon if you like what we do and would like to see better and better content please consider supporting us financially Whatever tier you choose, you do get a little back from us, from the basics of a community of nerds you get to hang out and chat with in our Discord, all the way up to some swag items or getting to appear on a Nerd Network show. Uh, take a look and choose the tier that is right for you. And we would love to have your support in what we are doing here. Enjoy your rest of your content. All right. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, we are going to... Uh kind of dive into the episode now uh, spoiler chains are off uh, so guys I want to start off with kind of our thoughts on the episode just as a whole um, we had pretty much a little bit of everything in this episode um, it's pretty much a 30 minute Star Wars movie um, we get the big monster fight with the giant crocodile uh, we get a western shootout on Navarro um, and we get a a rarely seen, uh, especially in live action TV stuff, space battle. I love space battles. Um, and we get one of those in this episode. Uh, so Fire Gresker, we're going to start off with you, your thoughts on kind of the episode as a whole. So first off, we were talking a little bit about this prior. Um, I think it's, it's pretty sad that one of the most feared types of bounty hunters in the entire galaxy, the Mandalorians, get into a fight with a giant lizard, and they're just getting demolished by a giant lizard. I understand he has armor on, I understand that, you know, their blasters aren't really doing much of anything, but there should be a weak point on that thing somewhere. I mean, we've seen bigger things in Star Wars that get taken down, you know, bigger creatures in Star Wars get taken down because of weak point that's all i'm saying um i think it is really awesome that we do get a space battle like you said in live action tv we don't really get that very often um i can't really attest to like any of the animated stuff because i have not seen any of the animated stuff but in live action we don't get very many i don't even think in the movies prequel trilogy or the equal any any of the nine movies i don't think we've got that many um and it we was got a, tons of it in the first in episodes one through three yeah um but yeah um but to see this to see the mandalorian in his little you know fighter that he has um getting into these space fights was really and I, I, I couldn't help but laugh because he's like sitting there teaching Grogu how to do it. So, um, I thought overall it was a really good episode, though. Yeah, um, I, I will say in the Mandalorian's defense, you go try fighting a T-Rex or a giant crocodile and see how you fare. Um, also, you know, we have seen people struggle with giant monsters, um, the Republic was barely able to contain a Zillow beast in the Clone Wars 
series. Um, so it's not out of the realm of possibility that they could get demolished by. I mean, and you even see it. He eats one of the Mandalorians. He eats a guy armored in Beskar and just chews right through it like it's nothing. So. Yeah. I mean, the body was whole when it went down the throat. I'm not going to lie. I was expecting a Drax. I, I, I really was. <laughs> From the inside, or like that Mandalorian stumbles out after the blast that kills the croc thing. I was really expecting it. Um, just like, yeah, we may get eaten, but it, it, it'd be like a major callback to Boba Fett. We may get eaten, but we'll walk out in the end. Well, no, because you actually see him get crunched because you see all the sparks and stuff from the suit as he's chomping down on him. Um, so, Trios, your your thoughts on the episode as a whole? Um, I'm I'm with you. Like we we did see. Like I was I was sitting there. I was like, somebody shoot one of the the rocket pack things at it or something. But we do see him jump onto the the toidal. <laughs> For lack of a better word, I'm gonna call it the snapping turtle because. There's no better, there's no more app description. It snapped and it had a turtle bag. So it, we did see him place explosives and. And it those did nothing. did nothing. Like, this thing's in armor. Like, it, and they're shooting its skin. It's barely leaving laser marks. We've seen stuff like that. Like, the 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 Zillow, as you mentioned in Clone Wars, like, we we've seen stuff like that where it just, you can shoot it with a billion different things unless you have some real heavy, like, ship-type armaments, you're not going to make a dent. Um, but, yeah, I, I, I liked that part. I loved getting to see into the start. I'm not going to lie, when they first brought out that helmet, I was like, yeah, we're getting Grogu's armor. Like, it was like, yeah, let's go. Because it looked like it was almost the right size. I was like, will they, won't they? And then I saw the kid, and I was like, oh, can't wait for it, though. Um. Yeah, fire, fire, Greska, Don't you be disrespecting the Naboo muscle car, okay? That thing is awesome. Uh, to that space fight, I absolutely loved it. I I loved when they rolled on. And they're like, okay, we've got four pirates. I can take out these guys. Oh, more pirates. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I I can take out these guys. And you just see them like I'm just sitting this whole time thinking this is like. A pro gamer Han Solo move. Never tell me the odds. Mando's just like, what odds? They're, the the odds are in my favor. No, that if I'm here, the odds are in my favor. But we got to see some really cool maneuvers, and and I think some really like the only time I've seen anything that was close to that style of combat, I would say is Poe. Um, so we got to see some really good combat, uh, and like you said, it was it was basically a mini movie and. You know, we set up everything. They they did a beautiful job of setting up everything in this episode. You got to see a little bit of backstory on the the watch or the Mandalorians that don't remove their helmets. Um, you got to see that we're we're probably going to have Grogu become a um, what do they call when they they find somebody and induct them into the watch. What what were they called? I can't remember. Foundling. Uh, foundling. Yes, the we're we're probably gonna have Grogu become a foundling. Um you you got to see what the main plot or I expect to be the main plot of this entire season is going to be. Um and we're starting to see Mando get pulled into the Mandalorian lore more than he wants to. He just kind of wants to do his own thing, but, you know, due to whatever, he's become the apostate and he's exiled and he, it's, that, to me, it feels like he's like, I can't, I want to go, I want to settle down, I want to help Grogu, but I can't be estranged from my family and successfully do this. And I don't think he can raise Grogu as a foundling without the Watch's help, especially the armorer who seems... To be the only person who has this knowledge in the entire galaxy. So, yeah, yeah, this this episode was loaded, and I'm amazed at what they did in 35 minutes. Like it felt like a full hour. It really did. Yeah. Um. So, two things that I want to point out in response to you there, Trios. Number one, Stabbing Turtle, maybe, but not really, because of. Number one, it looked like a crocodile. Number two, it did a death roll, which is 
something Fairy only croc. crocodiles do. Um, Napping croc? <laughs> no. No, definitely <laughs> very crocodilian. Um, but also something that, you know, I was waiting to see if you guys pointed it out or not. Um, we, as far as I know, we were introduced to an entirely new species in this episode um, with the uh, pirate captain. Um, I think I have his name here somewhere. Ben? I think it was Ben. Um, it was something. He began with a V. I thought... Glorian Shard. There we go. Oh, the Pirate King. Okay, I thought you were talking yes. about who was like serve me a drink. <laughs> like, no, no, that cool. go away. That guy. That guy is a Nikto. Um, yeah, I was gonna say I could have sworn we saw his species in. We've uh, seen it in a lot of things. Um, I remember it from the Clone Wars. Yeah, well, he's there's also a green Nikto in uh, Resistance. Uh, yeah. Is anybody but, else no. getting Davy Jones feels from the Absolutely. Pirate King? Absolutely. I'm yeah. just expecting to hear organ music in the background, like, oh man. Uh, so yeah, we, we got a, a brand new species as far as I know with, with Gorian, um, which was cool. Uh, but so this kind of moves us into our, our next discussion point. Uh, the Anzellans are so adorable i mean i know we saw one in episode nine um but the anzellans especially in this episode they were the the biggest thing that i could barely tell if it was cgi or puppetry because of the way that they were moving they were moving very stiff as if they were puppeted um uh, mm -hmm. which was really cool um but and then trios you kind of touched on it as far as them setting all these different things up din is getting in a lot of different directions to start out this season mm -hmm. he's trying to redeem himself he's trying to prove that Mandalore is not poisoned he's trying to raise Grogu and now he has issues with Gory and Shard and these pirates um, yep. so he he's going, he's being pulled like his attention is being pulled um, so I wanted to get y'all's thoughts and we'll start with you Trias on you know where things might head the rest of the season um, and which if any of Din's kind of missions is going to kind of suffer because of this, you know, pulling of attention in so many different directions. Um, I I think the obvious one's going to suffer. That's going to be his ability to settle on Navarro, which, by the way, holy crap! Like Navarro went from Tatooine-like dust world back scum on <laughs> to like good lord it it looked the the closest it looked like the palace the the retreat palace from naboo from the clone wars sequel like it they've made a, an, an amazing change for that planet and i really like what they did there and i really liked that he's like yeah i've got a plot for you man i need a marshal you're good with guns You've got this kid that you're trying to raise. Like, it, it, the stars are aligning, man. And he's just like, I can't. And that's the one I think we're going to get, we're going to get the draw to. And I'm really hoping they kind of play on that where they get to where it's like, he just wants to settle down. Kind of, uh, oh gosh, what is it? The, the Doctor Who with Matt, Doctor Who with Matt Smith, where it's a good man goes to war. He, he, doesn't want to end up with this but he's gonna get dragged into it anyways and we do see that with um can't remember her name starbuck i always i always call her starbuck because okay. i always know her yeah i will always know her from battlestar galactica she did such a good job in that she's doing a great job in this but uh bo katan um you go lead them swing that thing around and they'll follow you anywhere i i He's gonna. He's going to be the reluctant, re, reluctant, reluctant once in future king. I think, um, is what he's gonna get pulled to. But we'll see. That that's probably gonna be season four. Seeing him get pulled into that once in future king. I think we might see hints of it in season three if they go that that route. But um, right now, I think his his I want to settle down is gonna suffer. Um, he does seem to, the show does seem to have a consistent pulling him towards the mission he doesn't want to do the most. 
Um, and right now, I think that mission that he doesn't want to do the most is uniting the Mandalorians. And so I think we're going to see him get pulled into that, trying to recruit help to go check out Mandalore. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I think that, um, yeah, he's going to be very much uh, like a like an Aragon character. Um, you know, Aragon was you know kind of the rightful ruler of of the humans in in the Lord of the Rings, but he really didn't want to do it for a long time. Oh. All right, Greska, your thoughts. So I agree with a lot with what Drio is saying. Um, one of the things that you don't have in here is uh, we need IG-11. Um, one of the smaller plot points, I guess you could say, of this episode was him going to the Anzellans to repair IG-11, um, but they need the memory chip. And I think that's going to play a part before he tries to go to Mandalore because... I completely forgot about that. Good call. Yeah, yes, that, it, that is another quest that he has on top of all the other ones. Yeah, yeah, I mean, he's he he needs to find the memory chip, right? And he didn't specify why he needed IG-11 because, you know, Grief is telling him, hey, look, we can find you another droid. No, I need that one. I trust him. Okay. Why do you need that one? Like, I think that's going to come into because, play at some point. Because he, no, they've already... They he established like that droids. back in season in season one. They established that he does not trust droids at all. Right. Mm -hmm. The fact that he trusted IG Eleven was a huge character step for him. <laughs> character development. Yeah, I, I forgot about that. It's been a while since I've seen. Um. But yeah. But yeah, we're gonna we're gonna see that come into play, and I think we're gonna see that come into play before he tries to go to Mandalore. Um originally when he went to the palace to go see uh Bo whatever um I thought he was going there to get a memory chip for IG11 and then we see a K2 unit which was really awesome um but yeah the the lack is definitely going to come the the lack of of him not being able to complete goals is going to be that uh settling down um I don't think we're going to see him do that because he has, you know, trying to prove Mandalore is not poisoned and trying to find the memory chip and avoiding space pirates and <laughs> raising Grogu and, 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 oh, By and. the way, I have Excalibur and... Yeah, exactly. Really, this show really does seem to be turning into and one more thing. Like, <laughs> right. <laughs> um, every yeah. time he finishes something, one more thing. Well, yeah. it's oh. it's it's like that saying: you cut off the head of a hydra, two more grow back. He completes one challenge, oh, yeah. he gets two more challenges. You know, <laughs> so can you can you do this one small favor for me? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Now I I do think that that he'll get you know grief will keep that parcel for him, and he'll get that as like a side vacation home that he can visit. You know every once in a while, like once a season or something like that, but he ain't staying for a while. Yep. Um, touching base on, on, uh, Gina Carano's character. I do like that. They, they threw a bone to the, um, what was she? She was the marshal before. Yep. I do like that. They were like, yeah, as soon as all that stuff on Navarro was done, she went spe like special forces recruited her. So I, yeah. I like that they didn't go like, oh yeah, she was killed in this random interaction. So there's possibility if you know, the bad blood ever settles uh, between them that Jean or Carano could reprise a role and come back, which yes. would be cool. Yeah, yeah, it, it was good that they didn't ignore her either. Um, cause that would have been very easy to do to ignore or just kill her off off screen or anything. Um, so, so the last thing I wanted to talk about with you guys, um, Kevin might know more about this than you fire Greska, Cause I know that you have not watched a lot of the animated stuff. Um, this is kind of very much, this is almost Easter egg territory for this episode, but it carries a much larger meaning that we already know for what's coming up with Ahsoka and Skeleton Crew. Um, and the casual viewer who doesn't, like you, uh, Fire Greska, has not seen, uh, in particular, Star Wars Rebels. 
uh, would not have made the connection. Uh, it's very early in the episode when they're traveling through hyperspace and Grogu is looking out. He's fascinated by oh, hyperspace. Oh, yeah. What? He sees a pergil in hyperspace. Okay, um, I... Yeah, I hadn't. I was wondering. I was. I was gonna ask because I don't think. I don't think I've watched Rebels all the way through. And I was like, when did we establish that there's stuff that can travel at light speed just organically? Pergil are are hyperspace traveling space whales, um, and they are very important. Uh, spoilers for anybody who has not seen Rebels. Okay, we're good. You've got your spoiler for Rebels. Uh, they, at the end, at the very end of Rebels, the very last episode, uh, oh god, I can't remember the kid's name. The little Jedi kid. I cannot remember his name off the top of my head for a minute. Whatever. Um, he calls these Pergil while he's being, he's on Thrawn's Imperial Star Destroyer in face to face with Thrawn. And he calls these Pergil, and these Pergil take him and Thrawn into hyperspace to parts unknown. Um, and that is that is the end of the Rebels series. Uh, that's one of the last scenes that we get. So we know that these Pergil are very important to the story overall. Um, it's how Thrawn and the kid got to parts unknown, which is supposedly a different galaxy from what, I'm, uh, what the rumors are. But Ahsoka and Skeleton crew are going to deal very heavily with all of that. Um, so, I guess uh, it's less of a. Th I, I thought you had seen all of Rebels. Um, it's all right. I'm definitely going to watch it now. <laughs> um, so, I guess we kind of already answered the. Did you guys know what they were? I'm assuming well, I, that did not. I knew they no, were space like, whales. <laughs> yeah. It was either going to be space whales or something was going to... I was really, like, half expecting when I saw Grogu go down and pop up in his arm, I was really expecting Grogu to turn around and be like... <laughs> but no, because Din, Din was asleep. Yeah, I know. I was expecting him to, like, shake him and wake him up and be like, what are those? But that that was also a cute moment, by the way. Snuggling yes, up he next was. To, to Din. And I also liked when uh, he landed... The, going back to the beginning when he landed after taking out the, the croc and you're just like where's Grogu and then you just see him pop up out of the little cockpit and you're like okay there he is <laughs> Grogu also had a very adorable moment when he was when they were in uh, Grief's office he's just sitting there spitting in the chair well, that then, was good then, I also liked the hugging then, oh then yes stops the hugging him. the Anzellan yeah that was cute um then also uh, uh, stops him from spinning the chair and he just uses the force to grab the candy and eat the candy. Yeah, that was that was great. I expected that to be like a background thing for at least 30 seconds. Just <laughs> Grogu doing that and then Manda going over and stop it. <laughs> well, that's kind of what happened because you kind of see him. He's almost like in a faded foreground for a lot of the shots when Mando and Grief mm -hmm. are talking, spinning in that chair. And eventually, that Mandalorian just comes up, and puts his hand on it, like that's enough. <laughs> yeah, I, I love how they're they're maintaining that. Yes, Grogu is a kid. He is growing up, but he's still a kid. But he's he's coming into his own a little bit and learning how to use his abilities. Um, and well, yeah, because he's sitting at the table yeah. and he sees the little snacks. And he's just like, I'll take one of them. <laughs> Well, I think he was Ooh, also using M &M. the force to spin himself around the, the in the chair too. Possibly, Maybe, yeah. I didn't because think he about wasn't. That, there was, that's funny. He's too I short guess... to, you know, he's this that's freaking true, big. Right? And you didn't see him like putting his hands on the table to push himself. Exactly. I was thinking maybe there was a control panel on it and he was just holding the button or he clicked the button and you had to click it to undo it or something. But yeah, it's funnier if he's using the force to just spin the chair. Well, That'd I think great. I, I have to go back and rewatch it, but I'm pretty sure you can see his little hand like sticking up like this every time he passes around that you see like this much of his head sticking up from above the desk. I'll have to check it out. But um, yeah, that's a that's a good put it into slow mo, put it in like, you know, quarter time speed and, and just watch. Exactly. Yep. 
I I thought he was trying to eat the Anzalan at first, not giving it a hug. Um, thought it was the little frog incident <laughs> all over again. I mean, I'm sure if he was <laughs> trying to eat it even after the hug. <laughs> like, is, is the cute thing think this thing is cuter than the cute thing? Because this whole thing is adorable. Yeah. I, Grogu's not a snake. He's not going to be swallowing the Anzalan. <laughs> uh. Um... But yeah, this this was a really overall. I think this was a really good episode, and uh, you know, like like I said at the top, you know, it it had everything that you want in a good Star Wars movie, just condensed into thirty thirty five minutes. Yeah, um, and I really loved the tie in to the main episodic movies uh, with the, the droid builders. Um, yeah, that was that was a cool tie in. I'm like I said, I. Mm, the 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 sequels, eh, but there were parts of the sequels that I liked, um, and that was yeah. one of them. I loved these little, like it. It just makes sense that the best droid builders in the world would be the size of the components. Like <laughs> you can literally crawl into the arm to get at stuff. Yeah. Yep. Um. So, uh, Greska, Fire Greska, um, we'll. Do you have any other final thoughts on this episode? Because I think we're pretty much done. The the Hercule discussion point I thought was going to be a bigger discussion point with you guys, but you guys are very unknowledgeable, which is cool. Sorry, I'm not we have let you down. No, no. no. To be fair, <laughs> to be fair about the Pergil, I already knew about them. Um, I think of because of something else that's happening on in my life right now. So I knew of their existence, and I knew they were canonized. Um. But I just didn't make the, like, when I saw it in the episode, I was like, oh, yeah, that's the space whale that's been canonized. I forgot the name of it, though. I didn't, you know, know it was Pergo, yeah, but I, I, know, funny, I knew what it was. A funny, funny story. I, I run a, a Star Wars uh, D&D game, and uh, before I had watched Rebels and knew about these Pergo, the space whales, I threw space whales just as an absolute joke into the game. And then it was a couple weeks later, I was like, wait. They're actually real. This is a thing. Uh, um, I will. I, I also like it, it. So this is the last thing for me, dude. I want that Nabu cruise. Like, I, I want that thing. Like that. The man, Mando ship is awesome. Like, yes, I just I, love everything about it. I need like a, a Lego, a Lego set of it, a Lego model of it. Like yesterday, so that I can put it behind me. Mm-hmm. Like, I love that thing. Also, did anybody else notice he moved the, the super speed button? I didn't notice that he moved it, no. I was pretty sure, because I thought when we initially saw it, he got, you know, pulled over by the New yeah. Republic, that it was on the trigger, and he hit a button on the trigger, and it went. But now it's behind a cover. So I may be wrong on that, but I was pretty sure there wasn't a cover to begin with, and I wonder if he had to I mean, put that because of Grogu. It, it probably, it <laughs> makes sense. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah it, it I, I can't. Really I sense. can't get over the. I can't get over the, the start like the the space battle this time and the yeah, or They they really that was my one of my favorite parts of the episode, hands down, yeah. was just that combat scene was excellent. I, I love a good Star Wars space battle. Um, mm -hmm. Did you have any other thoughts there, Fire Greska? Well, so my only question is, how does Grogu get from his little cockpit inside of Mando's cockpit? Because... It's crawl space. Okay, I guess. <laughs> that's, that's the only thing that makes sense. There's crawl space. Yeah. I mean, you do see in... Um... In the X Wings, in, in um, I think uh, it's not the Rise of Skywalker, uh, the Last Jedi, when Poe is trying to distract the Dreadnought so we can get in close enough to use the booster, you do see BB-8 go down, and there's there's a decent amount of space in inside the X Wing, um, so I Fire. I could definitely see, and it's a completely customized ship with her knowing that there would either have been a droid in that socket or uh, Grogu was going to be in that socket because 
Yeah. He had Grogu when she was there, so maybe she was just like, okay, you lost your other shit, but we need some space for him to crawl. And there's probably a maintenance to be able to get to the vehicle. There's something there. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Definitely. That's fair. All right. Well, I think that about wraps up for Mandalorian. Um, so, uh, Trios, why don't you tell all these wonderful people out there in YouTube land where they can find you, what you're up to, all that good stuff. Uh, you cannot find me in YouTube land. Uh, I generally am not huge on the social media scene. As usual, I'm kicking around the network. Uh, you can find me here. Um, you can find me on Discord if you're part of the Discord. Shoot me a message if you want to chat, engage in conversation, sometimes in in the video below. But yeah, uh, just kicking around the network most mostly. Awesome. Uh, Fire Greska. Uh, they can find me at Fire Greska on Twitter, Twitch, Instagram, and YouTube. Um, currently doing a RPG playthrough of Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep on critical mode. So that's fun. Um, and you can also find me here on the Nerd Network. I'm doing various things around, so you can contact me through that too. Well, cool. And uh, I, as always... Uh, can be found at Darkside Malik on Twitch and Twitter, um, as well as here on the Nerd Republic channel, um, and you know doing various, mainly Star Wars content. Um, I do occasionally do other things here and there, but mainly Star Wars content. You know we've got Mando just started. We do Bad Batch uh, reviews and stuff. We'll be doing Ahsoka and Skeleton Crew later this year. Um, so. Well, we thank you guys for hanging out with us, listening to a bunch of nerds talk and uh, laugh about Star Wars. And uh, if you could, you know, give us a like, subscribe to the channel, comment down below. All that stuff helps the algorithm, helps us um, be able to provide more content to you guys. So uh, until next time, may the force be with you. Hey, thanks for tuning into this video here on the Nerd Network. John, what else do we have here on the network? Well, make sure you check out all of our shows uh, and our new shorts. This is uh, something new for us, and we've been having a lot of fun with it. But we cover, with both of these, we cover big franchises and some more of the niche entertainment that you may or may not already be following closely yourself. Our primary shows include Nerd Talk. Uh, obviously, this is our premiere show. This is where we go over reviews of current shows as their uh, current episodes of shows as they're coming out and reactions to trailers as they happen. In addition, we have Adventures in Nevermore. This is uh, a real fun series going through a D&D &D, uh, game and, and all the hilarity that ensues. We also have our show Nerds in Conversation. This is uh, a social commentary show taking uh, subject matter and, and headlines and, and going through them from a nerd perspective uh, in, in a more interesting way. In addition, we have News with the Nerds. This is our headline show for giving, uh, giving you all the, the best in, in news information for the week, uh, again, from the nerd perspective. And then finally, we have my baby. We have The John's Vault. It's our journey into retro content. We basically review movies that, that are important to me, that I love, that I've, I've known for years and years and years, and Jake here has never seen. So it's a fun way to go back and look at some of the things from yesteryear uh, that uh, that we may be seeing through fresh eyes. Keep an eye out for more shorts. Uh, that That is one of our biggest new things that we're doing. We're going to have plenty of those coming out as well. And thank you for tuning in here to this video. If you like what we're doing and you'd like to support us or follow us, remember to subscribe to the channel. Hit that like button so YouTube will promote these videos and we can share them with all of our nerdy friends because the more nerds, in the conversation, the better the conversation is. And if you'd like to support us financially so we can do better, we can have better product delivered to you, check out our Patreon in the link tree. But from all of us here at the Nerd Network, thank you. Have an awesome day. Have a great rest of your day and be safe.